Hi, old guy. So today we're going to talk about hydraulic clutches and clutch start features on newer cars. I'm not a real fan of hydraulic clutches. I go back to a time when my 55 Chevy had actuating arms. One arm came out from underneath the firewall. There was a pivot and then it went back to the clutch. My 914 has a clutch that runs all the way from the pedal assembly in the front of the car, all the way to the rear, over a pulley, and back up to the arm. The thing I like about cable clutches is they were adjustable. You could adjust your cable to where you wanted your foot to come off the floor or where the clutch engaged. You can't do this with a hydraulic clutch. It's basically is where it is. Um, to me, this creates a problem. I always start my car in neutral without the clutch in, and that's fine on my Audi Coupe. But on my Mark V Jetta, it has a clutch start feature. Now, they came out with this feature because people would start their car in gear and run into something. It is a trainable thing. I don't like it. I always start in neutral. The reason I like to start in neutral, inside your motor, when you press on the clutch, it presses against the flywheel fingers, which press against the flywheel, and it moves the whole crank assembly forward. So inside your motor, you have what you call thrust bearings. And that force being applied forward ran on the thrust bearing, so you know it took up that, it took up that uh, pressure. Now, when you have a clutch start feature on your car, and you go to start it with the clutch in, there's no oil circulating in your engine. So when you press in the clutch, start your car, you've got your crank up against your thrust bearing. And that is basically metal on metal. There's no oil in there to circulating between those two forces. The other thing is, is that when you press in your clutch, you should only have to press it in far enough to disengage your clutch. So when you're pressing your pressure plate, the fingers on the pressure plate go in and it actually loosens the force on the clutch and it allows you to change gears. Well, if you go farther than you need, to me, it also puts excess pressure on the fingers of the flywheel and on the throw-out bearing. Now the throw-out bearing is basically, like it says, bearing. With a flat surface on it, goes on the fingers, and that's how they get compressed. Now, a hydraulic clutch uses a lot of pressure. If you're going past where you need to engage or disengage your clutch, all you're doing is increasing the amount of pressure. So you've got more pressure than needed this applies more pressure to the fingers and actually moves them farther than they need to go. And it also adds more pressure to those thrust bearings. Let's see if I covered everything. The other, the other thing about a hydraulic clutch is it's, it's kind of vague, uh, along with your throttle. On the Mark V, drive-by-wire, this is still a cable accelerator. Um, I understand the reasoning behind that. Just like the hydraulic clutch, you can put the master and the slave anywhere you want to and it makes packaging a lot easier. On a drive-by wire, you don't have to worry about where your accelerator cable is going. It makes manufacturing easier and you don't have to worry about how to route those cables. So what I did on my Mark V in order to cure my problem of without being able to start in neutral I made up a clutch stop bypass harness. So this harness goes between the existing harness on the car and the hall sensor on your clutch master. And this allows you to start the car in neutral. And since you're able to start the car in neutral and you no longer have to have your pedal all the way to the floor, I also installed a clutch stop, an adjustable clutch stop. So now I can adjust where my pedal stops. And in doing this, I no longer have that vague, you know, two or three inches of where the clutch is going to engage. I know exactly where it's going to engage. It's going to engage right off the floor. There are companies out there that will sell you a clutch stop. 
But the problem is they don't tell you that even though you put in the clutch stop, it has to be almost all the way in because you still have to have a certain amount of pedal movement in order to get the clutch start feature engaged. An interesting note is that the later cars, on earlier cars, like let's take my 914 again, one of your crank bearings had shoulders on it and those shoulders were on both sides. And so when you pressed in the clutch, you know, that side of that bearing is what took the load. The newer cars like this VW, and it doesn't matter whether it was a 2.5, a diesel, a two liter, or a 1.8. The thrust bearings are little pieces of metal in a groove on the block, on one of the saddles for the block, all right? So you put your main cap on, you've got these two pieces of metal on both sides of that particular saddle, and that's your thrust bearing. I have a friend of mine, he put a, one of the 2.507Ks in a small chassis Audi, made it longitudinal, and he had a problem with those thrust bearings. Now he's running high horsepower, somewhere north of 500 horsepower. But in order to increase the uh, thrust bearing capacity, he took the main cap and had the same, had a groove put in them so he could run the same thrust bearings in it and it cured a problem he had. What I'm going to show you now is how a, the clutch hall sensor works, uh, how to bypass it or, you know, how I put my harness on it and a clutch stop. So this is your clutch master. You, if you look my, at my Previous video on how to take this out, you've seen it before. Clutch pedal. Um, the way this works, okay, is your clutch rod moves in and out. Can I get it in and out? No, it's, it's broken. Okay, so, oh, there we go. So this moves in and out, and when it moves in and out, there's a rod in here, and it sends a signal to this hall sensor, okay? And this hall sensor does two things. One, it reads your clutch start, so it has to be in before it works, and it also reads your cruise control. So you take the hall sensor off, okay? It's basically a hall sensor, and a connector, all right? So, like I said, it, the hall sensor reads this rod and allows you to, and it, you know, you have to press in the clutch all the way. Now what I did, I stuck a harness on it. And that allows me to bypass the clutch stop feature but it lets me keep the cruise control. So that's basically what I did. Um, I just basically built bypass harness. Now the reason I built the Heiner harness, instead of playing with the wires around over here, was because if I go to sell my car, I can take this out. Because I can imagine that you leave this feature in I mean, you leave this bypass harness in, somebody buys your car, and it no longer has the clutch stop feature. So they go to start it in gear and run it into a wall or another car. They're gonna blame you, and they're gonna come after you because you disabled a safety feature on their car. Anyway, I built the harness, and You know, just put it in there. So that way, I didn't have to worry about it. This is my adjustable clutch stop. It allows you to adjust this anywhere you want. And when this closes, boom, it stops against it. It has a lock nut and a washer. And this allows you to adjust it anywhere you want to so that it, you know, 
you can adjust the clutch to your liking where how far up off the floor it is. Basically it's normally, this was just a little rubber plug in there and I took it out, I drilled a 3 16 hole, I put an adapter in here and I installed my stop. Next up, clutch flywheel pressure plate. I just wanted to add a little more explanation to this. Now this clutch is off an older car but it's, so it's not out of a Mark V or whatever but this is what I had laying around and this is off an older car but it's basically the same principle. So you have a throw out bearing. Now on a Mark V or Mark VI VW, this throw out bearing is also the slave cylinder. So there's stuff on here and it presses against these fingers on your pressure plate. Now as I was explaining before, these fingers only have to be pressed in by this item. Now remember, this is a bearing. So you've got a lot of pressure on that when you start pressing it down. So these fingers only have to go down far enough that what they do is they pull this plate, they pull this plate, all right, right here, this is your friction surface, they pull it away from this clutch, which allows this to be looser in here, and your spline from your transmission goes in here, and this allows you to shift gears. So let's see if I can put this back on, right? If I can line up the holes again. Should have probably marked it beforehand, huh? Anyhow, I'm not gonna worry about it. So what I'm saying is when you, when you press in this throw out bearing with a hydraulic clutch, all right, it pushes this pressure plate, which is bolted to the flywheel, and it presses up against the clutch. It moves the whole thing forward. So let's say you're exerting a thousand pounds of pressure. That's all that's needed to release that clutch so you can shift gears. Now, if you're going an extra two or three inches, you're increasing that hydraulic pressure. So if this took 5,000 pounds to just release the clutch, you could be up to 1,500 pounds. To me, that puts excess pressure on a throwout bearing, on the fingers of your pressure plate, and on your thrust bearing inside your motor on the crank. Anyway, that's my logic behind using a clutch pedal stop to adjust my pedal so I don't have to go too far. The idea behind the clutch stop bypass so that there's no pressure against the thrust bearing until there's already oil circulating around that thrust bearing. I don't have metal to metal. So these are my thoughts. This is what I did. You don't have to.